All right, I've just posted a 10 minute video on the theory of mapping and modeling. I highly recommend watching it. It is somewhat more theoretical and it explains my ideas about mapping versus modeling and why I prefer mapping to modeling. And I'm not very big on modeling as, as a selling point, a vocabulary element, or as an identity decoration talking about NLP being modeling full stop. There are people who like to think that way. I am not one of them. I like to think about in terms of mapping. In my vocabulary, NLP is mapping full stop. Never heard of modeling. Um, so we discussed the 1 to 10 or the 1 to 5 or the 1 to 3 gradient thinking in carefully calibrated, carefully click marked gradients versus simpler categories. Um, we do think in categories. That's the basic. What is this an example of? The Somewhere in the back of our minds, in our basal ganglia or our thalamus, probably some part of our neocortex is constantly asking questions, even though they might not be verbally based linguistic questions, but it is constantly posing questions to the world. What, what is this an example of? What are these an example of? What is this an environment an example of? So since our brain is so fantastically engineered to constantly be asking what, what are these examples of? Let's exploit that very property of the brain that it is pre-wired to do and utilize that in ways that have, uh, have not been uh, explicitly utilized very often before, internally, through submodalities. Now, a little background, a necessary bit of background, which will probably result in having to make several, uh, several uploads because we've got some material to cover. Back in the day, back when I studied NLP from Frank Stass and Annie Linden on um, Prince Street in New York City, that was back in the 80s, a long time ago, that was pre my experience with John Grinder, um, they had a seminar class called The Fabric of Reality. And I think this was developed by other people and they had kind of imported it into their training. And The Fabric of Reality uh, gave me some very good insights into ways we could proceed. Although this has, of course, evolved well above and beyond the old fabric of reality material. But I thought I would acknowledge that there was some, some attempt, some effort uh, back then to give us um, a set of distinctions between what was either certain versus uncertain or real versus unreal. And the, the basic question that was asked in, in the fabric of reality uh, course was uh, how did you know? How did you internally distinguish between uh, that which was true, or you knew to be true, or you believed to be true? Which was we would say true in an interesting sense, true for you. What was truly true, really true for you in your head, versus what wasn't true? And um, some people have a better time, and, and they do a better job in their. Uh, more facile and their ability to distinguish between that which is true and that which is not true. Some people confuse or conflate the categories and they have problems sorting them out, um, sometimes by uh, intent and sometimes simply by that just the way their head works. So in order to go beyond the simple 1 to 10, 1 to 5 scaling, we have to ask a question, a 1 to 10, or a 1 to 5, or a 1 to 3, or if you prefer zeros, some people like to work from zeros, they just have a better feel for things that begin with a zero. Um, zero to 1, 0 to 5, 0 to 3. Other people actually think somewhat in negative numbers, you know, so they, they have a scale that goes from a negative 10 to a positive 10, or a negative 5 to a positive 5, or a negative 3 to a positive 3. I tend to think generally speaking the one the integer scales like one to five or one to ten are the simplest but if you're working in a much higher precision environment uh, people who have backgrounds in math engineering quantitative thinkers um, people who are already pretty pretty spiffed up in their in their sort of 
uh, numerical thought, uh, the minus 10 to plus 10 or the minus 5 to plus 5 way of encoding might work a lot better for them. And other people may have other interesting ways of linearizing these sorts of experiences. So, and I may be very, very limited in my appreciation of how other cultures or different systems of thinking might grade across, you know, uh, low intensity to high intensity or uh, low reliability to high reliability. So there may be other ways of mapping. And I think there's a lot of research and exploration that the field of NLP can do to find out uh, quite a bit about that. So where I'm going to go, and I'm, I'm trying to slowly, surely build a very solid foundation for us here. So what we've got to do, and I think I'm going to uh, complete this thought with this video and then completely address that fabric of reality process that we did 20 something, 25, 26 years ago um, in, a, in a separate video. Suffice it to say right now, um, ask yourself, one of the most important internal questions is to how do you distinguish between that which is true for you and that which is not true for you, or that which is very, then this is a sort of a separate sort, which is certainty. Uh, that which is highly certain or highly precise for you and that which may be very uncertain or unprecise for you. So think, think of almost like a double, double sort, a two-layer sort here. One, um, just fiction, you know, fiction, imagination, um, stuff that you've got it encoded so whenever you go there you say, yes, that's fantasy, that isn't true, that is not grounded in reality for me and that is very grounded, I'm very clear, it's part of my character to say that you know, these are truths that I acknowledge, okay? Um, and you may put them in different places, so you don't have to be stuck with my, my positional encoding. The second sort, the two sorts, the other sort is a um, high degree of precision. So you may know something is very true, and you may be very sure of its truth, but with a relatively low level of precision about that truth. You may be very, very sure that something is fantasy, that it doesn't really exist in the outer world, but you may know it with a very high degree of precision. You may have a very well-developed fantasy. Um, you know, a lot, that's what a lot of movies today, you know, like the Lord of the Rings, you know, I don't believe really happened, and yet um, it's a beautiful fantasy, but it's very specifically encoded, and you can go there and look at the encodings of it. So. Um, that will be where I'm going to leave this just because this goes on and on and on and we can really develop this in beautiful ways. So just let that part, uh, let that part kind of get into your inner, your inner computational space for the moment and then we will build on that.